Here is the list so far, taken from ProCyclingUK.com. AG2R Citroen Team I may be in the minority, but I've always liked the brown shorts. They're not as boring as black, but still dark enough to hide your junk. The designers were given a difficult situation here, because the red of Citroen does not match the blue and brown of AG2R. So they stuck mainly with text, and usually I don't like a white jersey with a bunch of logos because it feels lazy, but the way they angled the main text makes it just different enough to still feel professional. C. It's an average kit. It's a shame because I really like the AG2 a logo, which on its own has a lot of potential. Take a look at their kit from 2015, for example. Astana Kazakhstan team. Their blue always stands out in the peloton. I give them credit for that. This kit feels dated. The fade was popular a few years ago, but as you'll see later in this video, the current trend that everyone is mindlessly following is to have one sleeve that's a different color and stands out. This kit has the distinction of being both unoriginal and out of date. Or is it original now that it's out of date? You decide. C. It's average. The color is the best thing about it. Bahrain Victorious. As you'll see later, we know that Ineos was a fan of this kit. Red is a fairly common color in the peloton and they make it stand out with the splashes of yellow and blue. It's not their fault that Ineo stole their style. In fact, maybe they should get bonus points for that. B+. It's one of the best kits on this list. Bora Hansgrove. Here we see our first version of the bandwagon that lots of teams are following, the statement sleeve. There's just too much going on, but not in a good way. This kit would look better as mostly black with hints of green and red. It will stand out in the peloton though, so I give it credit for that. D. I don't hate it enough to give it an F, but it's one of the worst on the list. Kofidis. Simple but stylish. Again, red is a common color, but they make it stand out with the subtle pattern in the background of the red section. The white sleeves with the black text are going to keep the sponsor happy. That's going to be very visible to the cameras when the riders are bent over into the riding position. A. I consider this to be the best on this list. EF Education Easy Post. This is an improvement compared to last year. I'm not usually a fan but I like the pink and black combination better than the color combinations they have used in the past. It follows the asymmetric sleeve group think, but it does so better than most. The abundance of pink allows them the opportunity to come out with a special kit for the Giro, which is always fun. B. It's better than most. Group FDJ. This is a big change from their mostly white kit from last season. It's boring. It follows some of the big trends with the asymmetric sleeves and the geometric patterns, but not in a unique way. It's just boring. I don't know how else to say it. D. It's too boring to hate enough to give it an F. Ineos Grenadiers. It's a copy of Bahrain Victorious, 
But why? Look at the INEO's Grenadier website and that orange color is nowhere to be found. Everything is blue and red. Plus, it jumps on the asymmetric sleeve bandwagon, which is starting to annoy me at this point. Everything about this kit is frustrating. F. Intermarch Circus Wanty. This is horrible. White plus a bunch of sponsors always looks trashy in my eyes. The little splashes of blue and yellow don't save it. They even put some yellow on one sleeve to continue the unoriginal trend of the year. This team performs above its budget, but its kit does not. D minus. It's not bad enough for an F. Jumbo Visma. Great team, average kit. It has potential, but there are just too many logos. Luckily, some of their big stars will spend a lot of their time in a leader's jersey instead. C. It's average. Movistar team. I've always liked what Movistar has done over the years. It's simple and the Movistar logo really stands out. If you go to the Movistar website, you'll see that this kit matches their identity to the T. I deduct a few points for the fade on the sleeve. B plus. Pseudo Quickstep. This is classic Quickstep. You know what you're getting from them at this point. Too many logos for my taste. It looks cheap for such a long-lasting, well-performing team. C. Another average kit. T. Markia Samsic. It doesn't get much more simple than this. It's difficult to grade this one. On the one hand, it's boring. On the other hand, at this point in the list I'm glad that it's boring because we have seen some garbage on this list so far. C. It's average, but it's going to stand out. Team Bike Exchange Jayco. Another uninspiring kit. It's done well for what it is though. Why do the women's kits always look better? C+. It's on the high end of average. Trek Segafredo. This is simple and effective. I'm not typically a fan of white, but this doesn't look like logo overload. The blue shorts and red sleeves are a nice combination. It feels like they could do more with the Sega Frido S logo. Another C+. It's one of the better kits in the average category. UAE Team Emirates. Same concept as Trek, but not as well executed. Too many logos and the logos are more haphazardly placed. The shorts are also black, and don't break up the monotony. It's too bad that one of the best riders in the world has to wear this. C-. It's on the lower end of average. That's all. A few teams have not yet released their designs. So far, Kofidis is the best and Ineos is the worst. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching.